Greetings and blessings. Much love to you all. Thanks so much for clicking. I promise you're not going to regret clicking because I'm bringing you homemade sardines two ways. And as if that's not enough, I will be showing you also within this video a few useful and practical applications of your homemade sardines. And I will also be throwing within this video a bonus tutorial on how to preserve your homemade sardines. So you see, this video is an action-packed, detailed design to keep you glued. So enjoy the process, beautiful people. So my frozen fresh herrings are now in some water and I'm removing the scales using a blunt knife. And I keep the fish submerged in the water while I remove the scales. It's less messy that way I find. And also you don't have the scales flying all over the place and have a mess to clean up when you're done. Afterwards, trim the tails, remove the fins. So what we are essentially doing here is getting ready to debone the fish all right so the first thing I do is use a blunt knife to cut the head area right beneath the head and the gills and when I meet the resistance from the spine the bone of the spine I stop cutting and that's why it's better to use a blunt knife because I want that bone to stay in there that's how I'm going to debone it I do the same with the tail so I cut all around releasing the tail but not completely, also the head but not completely, um, so that way the bone stays intact. And you'll see why it's essential to do that. Then afterwards, I make a small incision there right where the belly is and remove the guts. So the head is still attached and then I start pressing along the spine with the belly facing down. Just keep pressing to the tail until you feel the flesh of the fish being released from the bone within it. Then locate the bone, hold the fish taut and pull. Perfect, beautiful. Your fish is deboned without filleting it. So I shared this video a couple of years ago um, and it was quite exciting, people enjoyed it. So this technique I actually learned from my mom. Thank you, mother. <laughs> All right, so our sardines or our herrings are now deboned. And the technique we're going to be using to cook these sardines will help the pin bones to soften. First, I add some garlic powder, followed by an optional chili flakes, just a pinch of it. I like the kick it brings and I also have some crushed white pepper and you may substitute that with crushed black pepper. Here is some salt also to taste and I also have all purpose seasoning and you may use a chicken, fish or even vegetable bouillon in place of that and of course I have my cooking olive oil. Friends, you must ensure that you're using cooking olive oil for this, not extra virgin olive oil. I am still learning, friends. I don't know at all. And I have recently learned that you don't use extra virgin olive oil to cook. It must be cooking olive oil. The extra virgin olive oil serves the purpose of dressings and things like that. You don't apply much heat to it. All right, so make sure that the fish is massaged thoroughly where the ingredients you have added so every piece of fish is coated well with the seasonings and spices. Now in the pot I'm going to be cooking the, the fish, I add my onions, my habanero chili, my bay leaves, and I'm also going to zest half of this lime into it. The oils from the zest is going to perfume the oil so beautifully and citrus, as we all know, works very well with fresh fish. So please do not omit this step. All right, so here is that cooking olive oil I mentioned and any brand of course will work and I pour in quite a bit of it because we all know uh, sardines are um, preserved in oil and I'm going to place the sardines in there overlapping each other conforming to the shape of the pot the way you arrange your sardines is also very important because when it's done cooking it will keep that shape okay 
So pour in some more olive oil and add one red chili and that's red thigh chili by the way. I love the flavor so that goes in there. And I have added enough oil to cover all the fish, okay? It's about maybe an inch above the fish and the process of cooking this is actually called confit. So we're going to be confiting the fish. So we're going to cook the fish on low heat slowly over two and a half hours to soften those pin bones. You can also cook it in a pressure cooker as I did in my original sardine recipe. And that only took 30 minutes and it was enough to soften those pin bones. So now let's get into the second sardine recipe. We need cooking olive oil, thinly sliced shallot onions, rosemary, and I'm using fresh, you can use dry, one habanero chili without the head in order for it to infuse its flavor sooner. Then add some finely minced ginger and garlic, stir and cook for about a minute and a half or until it starts becoming translucent. Then you're going to add some crushed white pepper or black if that's what you have on hand. Stir that in as well. And you see the onions are starting to caramelize. At this stage, we've been cooking for four minutes and that is perfect. Now this second recipe is sardines in tomato sauce, if you haven't already guessed. And yes, I have some homemade tomato sauce, which I can and have already shared the video. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to be using 32 ounces of my homemade tomato sauce. Now, in the summertime, when you have fresh produce available to you, or in Ghana, if you live in a climate where it's always summer, and you have fresh produce, you can can those. It's so easy to can. So do that and save you some freezer space. All right, so that video has, like I said, has already been uploaded. Here comes the next 16 ounces, so a total of 32 ounces. So you want to stir everything together to combine. And the tomato sauce, it was cooked. So it's literally just needing warming, all right? You're just heating it up. You don't need to cook it more because once the fish goes in, it's also going to poach nicely in the sauce over two and a half hours. Because sardines have pin bones, we need to cook it on the stove for that long. But if you don't have that much time and you're not afraid of using a pressure cooker, then by all means, use your pressure cooker. All you need is 30 minutes, all right, with the heat and the steam trapped, and it will soften those pin bones just like you have it in the can. All right, make sure you place the lid on, and this other one, which is confit in the oil, it's been two and a half hours already. And look at that fish. Perfectly confit. Pin bones are soft. They are actually mashable between two fingers. They are so small, I couldn't show it. But that's all you need. Low heat for two and a half hours, friends. Just look and see how the shape is perfect because of how we strategically place them in the pot. Now, a few applications of your sardines in olive oil. Here I have some ground uh, chili, onion, tomato sauce, and some plantain. And I'm just going to dish some over it. So we're going to bring flavor from the oil and the fish itself. And also protein. Just like you will use your canned sardines. Exciting. Simple yet flavorful. I'm all for that. And here also you can add your sardines in olive oil to your garden salads. All right, so I have my lettuce, I had some tomatoes, onions, sh some shredded uh, carrots, and now I'm adding the fish. I also added some croutons to it. And I'm also going to drizzle a little bit of the oil, sprinkle some salt, crushed black pepper onto it, and there you have it. 
a light lunch that is delicious and mouth-watering. And here, it's been two and a half hours for the sardines in tomato sauce, and there it is. Fish is together, no scattered fish here and there. I mean, hey, easy, right? <laughs> I hope you give it a shot. Now, here's an application for the sardine in tomato sauce. A little bit of the oil in a wok. I've added some thinly sliced garlic pieces to perfume the oil even more like it needs it. <laughs> and I'm going to now add some ginger. And these fresh aromatics serve the purpose of fortifying the flavors, that's all. Some crushed white pepper will go a long way to bring a nice little kick to it. Add some salt. I am preparing a quick noodle stir fry for the children. It is lunchtime and mommies all over the world are constantly looking for a quick, easy fix to serve their family fresh, tasty food. And being prepared at all times has been a lifesaver for me and I hope it serves the same purpose for you as well. So I gave some eggs a quick scramble in the wok and its contents and now I'm adding some fresh vegetables. Some onions, some shredded carrots, and red bell pepper. And I added just a little more oil to the wok in order to um, stir fry these fresh ingredients. Added some crushed white pepper and some salt. And now I'm going to stir fry everything together on high heat for just about a minute. Then I'll add some cabbage to this as well for some more crunch and fiber and of course flavor as well and then I will be adding my noodles shortly so I have some parboiled rice vermicelli noodles that just went in and I'm adding some of the sardines including some of that flavorful tomato sauce this was so good I actually regret not making more because the children finished it quickly and they wanted more <laughs> Even my little boy, he does not like vegetables. He actually detests them, but even he wanted more. So, hey friends, I hope you are inspired. I am inspired all over again, just even doing the voiceover. So yeah, this was quite inspired. It was really good, friends, so give it a shot. Here is another application of our sardines in tomato sauce. I have some gari and I have sprinkled a little water on it. Gari is fermented cassava. It's been grated and fermented and roasted into a couscous texture. What I'm making is called gari foto and it's also a very quick meal for your family. Add some of the tomato sauce and some fresh vegetables for crunch and fiber nutrition. Mix it all together and place some of your sardine itself on top of it for protein and lunch is served again. <laughs> My husband enjoyed this one. It was quite flavorful friends, very satisfying, yes. There are a million and one ways of applying your sardines in the oil or in the tomato sauce. And I know that you guys are so creative, you're going to figure it out. Of course, my mind is constantly flooded with ideas, but it's impossible to share all of my ideas. I'm going to rely on your own creativity and you need to report what you have done to inspire me also. So share your experiences with me. I hope you really give this a shot. So these are tightly closed and they're ready to go into the boiling water. So our mason jars are tightly closed and ready for canning. Our water has also come to a boil. And with the aid of a canning tongue, I'm going to safely pick each of these mason jars up and place them in the boiling water, cover the pot with its lid and allow to boil for 45 minutes. And that is all she wrote in the canning department, friends. There is a science to this 
And I think we all deserved a well detailed video discussing the pH balance and all of that. It's coming up pretty soon, so keep staying tuned. I hope you're inspired to try these ideas today. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day and have fun, especially in that kitchen. Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below and don't forget to share the video as well also watch more videos it is chop time and here in anaba's kitchen chop time is always yes friend so pull up a chair we are all friends and family here <laughs>